You look at Roku, again, had a really, really big run. Look how close this thing. This thing starts confirming, right? This thing starts confirming the low from three days ago. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Usually I would take uh, Thursday nights off. Um, I actually took it yesterday. I was so exhausted. There was so much good value yesterday. Um, everything was going nuts, right? The, the GameStops of the world was going nuts. The AMCs of the world were going nuts. Diamond hands, paper planes, everything in between. Uh, Tesla had a huge run yesterday. There was just so much stuff going on, but let's forget about that, right? There's nothing to do with that. If you guys remember, uh, three, four days ago, uh, actually five days ago, excuse me, uh, we had a really aggressive channel here that the queues broke, and the queues broke them pretty hard and had a two big day decline, uh, very, very ugly. Uh, we saw Tesla go from like 800 to uh, 619, we saw like a 200 point move, two 300 point move in Amazon, uh, and everything got smoked, like really, really aggressively. And the market got saved uh, two days ago when the queues reclaimed the 50 day moving average, leading to a pretty aggressive rally yesterday. I think we, we talked about that. Um, I think everybody really understood uh, the importance of a hammer reclaiming the 50 day moving average. So we got our spike right back into the five day moving average. And if you are uh, just starting out in, as, a, as a chartist or you're interested in technical analysis, uh, for me, just for me personally, uh, I'm one of the very few people who use uh, the five day moving average just because for me, it demonstrates the shortest term sentiment possible. If you watch watching this broadcast for the very, very first time, it, it's for, I believe it's one of the most underutilized uh, data collection areas that people use. Again, very few people use the five day, but I do. And you can see here every single time uh, the queues touch the five day moving average over the last two weeks, they got sold. They touched them, they got sold. They touched them, they got sold. And today they touched them again and they got sold. And I think what we started talking about three, four days ago was the obvious buyer strike. Uh, we saw it everywhere, you know, and stocks got really beat up. And if you go do your homework, uh, and I always emphasize that every single trader really should spend at least, I, I mean, at a bare minimum, uh, a half an hour to 45 minutes uh, looking at charts uh, in the middle of uh, after the work, right? Just, just kind of give you, get yourself an opinion uh, to collect some data to uh, formulate uh, a thought process going into the next day. And on the weekends, you're trying to do uh, a lot more thorough research. Start looking uh, at the Russell, members of the Russell, of the Qs, uh, of the spies, uh, the financial, whatever the case may be. You wanna kind of get a broad search, a broad scope of what's going on in the market. But for the middle of the week, just to kind of formulate an opinion, you, you have to take off the blinders. And I understand there's a lot of euphoria that came back in the last few days, um, you know, with the big run on AMC, big, big move. You had a big, big move uh, in GameStop. Um, just, just absolutely nuts. And, and the craziest part about GameStop yesterday was, if you guys remember, I was actually long GameStop yesterday. Um, I messed, completely messed it up, made no money on it, like literally no money on it. And a lot of my friends, and I, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine, I shared, I shared in the live webinar. If you guys remember on GameStop uh, yesterday, once it started building over the $49 level, it went like sideways underneath the pivot, about a dollar, dollar and a half underneath the pivot for about five hours. In the last 30 minutes, it ran up 150 points. Crazy, right? So it led to day two. And I think a lot of people you know, started chasing it up again the euphoria kicked in. And, and again, I am guilty of that as well. We actually uh, gave a pivot, and we'll, we'll get to the pivots in a second, uh, all above $150 of all, of all places. But again, there's, there was a technical reason for that, and the stock spiked up about 30 points. But this was the first time that nobody could really turn around and say, look, retail is chasing it up. There was a different game being played here. 
And you could see if you, and I tweeted out on my regular tweet, uh, Twitter account, if you go through the feed, you'll see there were buyers coming in for tomorrow, right? Literally for tomorrow's session, uh, tomorrow's expiration, the 200 and the 300 weeklies. There were guys putting up a million, million and a half dollar worth of premium for the March 19 call. So there was a reason for uh, the pivot that I put in. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. But I think the euphoria was so concentrated on those two names that people miss the big picture. And the overall market, when you look at the Teslas of the world, right? When you look at the Teslas of the world and saw exactly what happened. Again, we've been talking about this 800 pivot and then the 780 pivot, and then this pivot right here below 710. And today we talked about the 694 pivot. And I, I, I think the stock goes uh, lower tomorrow as well. But the most important part is I think a lot of people really miss the big picture, that there has been a buyer strike. Uh, especially in big cap technology. And although there was kind of a rotation, for example, uh, into the financial names, right? And Goldman had a big run, uh, Bank of America had a big run, uh, Citibank had a, had a big run, but they got exhausted as well. So when you look at the whole dynamics of the market, and again, we're, we're gonna kind of look at the queues as a barometer, and you know the queues now have closed one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive sessions underneath the five-day moving average, again, short-term sell signal, but this was the most important part. We closed the first time below the 50-day moving average, and that's a big deal. And again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand, you have to start watching this 211, uh, 311 level uh, tomorrow on the queues. Now, why is that important? Well, that was the hammer that was put in that the market reclaimed the 50-day moving average two days ago. So if we start losing this 311 level, you guys remember, if all you guys have been watching this broadcast for a very long time, do you remember the big number I've been talking about for a very, very long time in nausea, right? 305, you guys remember 305, 305, stick it on your forehead, uh, put it on a sticky pad, that's the magic number. If we start losing the 311 here on the queues tomorrow, then we go down to the 305. Now, if this thing confirms on Monday, and again, I'm not saying it will, I'm not a, you know, I'm not trying to, to spread fear, I'm not a fear monger, as you know, we trade both sides of the market, we're realistic, okay? I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear, I'm a realist, I'm an opportunist. I, I try to gather as much data as possible to put myself in a situation to try to win the next day. Um, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Again, it's not a game of being right, okay? If you're in a game of being right, or like it, or getting likes, or getting shares, or getting thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever the crap it's called, you're in the wrong business, okay? This is, this is a very, very aggressive business if you're wrong. The best thing we can do is formulate an opinion. So if you look at a whole bunch of stocks tonight, and again, I encourage everybody to do so, you'll notice one common denominator. They're very, very close to knocking down bottom channels. Maybe not macro just yet, because again, the rising 60 minute and the rising daily trend line still continues to be this 305 on a close. But when you start looking at many names, and again, you could go through a whole bunch of them, you know, some names that, you know, you've got to watch, right? Like a TDOC, 50 day moving average. Why is that important? It's mirroring the, 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 fi, uh, the, the cues, right? TDOC. When you look at Facebook, look at this range on Facebook. Look how many times it held this level. One, two, three, four. This, the, this Facebook starts getting below this level here. This thing has room, you know, all the way down to the January lows. Again, big spot. You start looking at Apple, right? Apple had a big, big unwind three days ago and we had this kind of like the big tech wreck. If Apple starts reclaiming this bottom channel here, look how much room it has to go. Again, we saw some really big aggressive uh, near-term put buyers in this thing. The 110s, uh, the 100s, the, the money is being put down. The bets are being laid on the sell side of the market. Again, doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has their own thought process. Everybody has their own uh, technical way to kind of navigate the waters. Uh, at least you know where the money flow uh, is going. You look at Roku, again, had a really, really big run. Look how close this thing. This thing starts confirming, right? This thing starts confirming the low from three days ago. Look how much room this thing has, right? A lot of room down. Uh, look at Tesla. And, and again, I don't think it's gonna, you know, maybe test the 619 level that it put in a couple of days ago. But if it starts confirming today's prices, then well, well then you have a test coming on the 1619 level. And if this area gets confirmed, look how much room potentially you have as well. So we're set up for tomorrow. And, and, I, and I've been joking around now for four years. And if you've been watching this broadcast, you kind of know what I'm about to say. Every single time 
um, sell bias. And again, I, I've went through a bunch of charts tonight. There, there's no way I can convince myself to say, hey, Dan, the market's going to run tomorrow. But there's a running joke, right? And every single time I'm 100% sell bias, 900% sell bias, 2,419% sell bias, what does the market do? The market gaps up 500 points and we go to all-time highs. Okay, right? Maybe this time is different. It, 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 again, it's not about being right. It's about being prepared. We just want to make sure that if the market opens up flat or up a little bit or even down a little bit and these ranges are still intact and they're still in the crosshairs of being confirmed, then and only then are we going to lay down our bets. There's If you're in the business of anticipating a move, you're going to get murdered. Especially ask any long-running short for the last four years, five years, how, you know, what they've been doing and what they've been thinking every single time there's potential damage in the market. And miraculously, the market gaps up the next day 500 points. Like I said, maybe this time is different. So the moral of the story is I'm prepared, okay? Um, it's, I'm not kind of trying to trick myself or outsmart myself. I'm looking at beta, you know, I'm looking at Amazon and Facebook and Apple uh, and Tesla and NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA had a uh, had a quarter. They sold the stock off on the quarter. It stopped that support. It's not a lot of thought behind it. This thing starts confirming taste price action. Well, then it's going to test this whole channel here. If this whole channel breaks. Look how much room you have now. So my bias today is to the sell side for tomorrow. You know, is the market going to gap down 500 points and my whole watch list is going to be burnt to hell in a handbasket? then yeah, then what can I do? But at least I am prepared. At least I do have an opinion. And the most important part is until that opinion can, turns into a confirmation channel, there is no trade. What's the worst case scenario tomorrow, right? The market gaps up, traps shorts, never takes out today's ranges and what we're looking at the, the upside. Really, is that really our worst case scenario? So like I've been saying for years and years and years, it's okay to be wrong, right? It's okay. I'm wrong every single day in my opinion. It's okay to be wrong in your opinion. As long as you're not stubborn and you're, you know, you're hard-headed and a mule to paint yourself in a corner in a bias and start putting on positions in anticipation of what you think is going to happen. Let it happen, right? We're not smart enough. You know, we're, we're all idiots. We're not smart enough to figure out what happens next. We have an idea what happens next. We have, a, um, we have an opinion of what happens next, but until it happens next, it's just a setup, not a trade. So very, very important to understand that. Other than that, uh, again, crazy action continues. Um, and, and, I, and I say this all the time. I think a lot of people confuse volatility with the average true range. And, I, and, I, and, and again, if you trade beta, like I trade beta, these are the, the biggest ranges in the market. You know, Tesla's and Netflix's and Facebook's and on and on and on. These are the stocks with the biggest, widest ranges. So when people talk about volatility, the market up 500, the market down 500, the market up 500, the market down 500, the market structure breaks down. You don't want to see the market structure break down. You want to see stocks with the biggest ranges continue their flow of orderly organic order flow. Once you start seeing up, down, up, down, up, down, number one, the liquidity goes away. The spreads get get wider, um, less participation in the names, and you can't act with any type of conviction because one uptick with the future, one downtick in the future, futures, you're going to be upside down in your trade. So I think a lot of, especially new traders, have, you know, they, they love the idea of volatility until things get volatile. Then all of a sudden you're talking about, well, if cash is a position, let's sit on our hands. No, cash is a position is, is not, you know, is not a position. You know, a position is a position. If you want to be flat, that's okay. And that's okay, but that's a, because that's a very proactive, mature thing to do. Uh, but the idea of volatility compared to an average true range is like comparing apples to hand grenades, completely two different conversations. So tomorrow, I am definitely sell bias. I am praying to the market gods that they can hear me. Please gap up the market or, or at least... Uh, open the market flat. I'd really appreciate it because at least at that point, we have a shot for these ranges to confirm. And if they do, uh, well, you know, we'll see what happens there. Other than that, uh, let's talk about the day. Not a, not many, but there were very, very value ones. So let's talk about this. Uh, Netflix, I liked to the upside. Never even came close to confirming. Uh, AMTX did okay. Uh, for all you guys who took AMTX, uh, 980 uh, needs to build. Here was uh, AMTX. Right, took out the 980, traded all the way up to uh, 1065 uh, before obviously the market sold it off. I still like this thing. Send an alert on it. I don't know if it's going to get there in the next few days, maybe next week. But if this thing starts confirming 11, maybe it goes higher. Uh, again, assuming the market 
uh, doesn't fall off a cliff. Uh, Paychex never got to the 94 level, it traded to like 93.80. It really needed to confirm the whole number. Uh, FSR, we scalped, I, I scalped this thing, that was my first trade of the day, very, very quick scalp. Uh, 23 ahead of earnings, 2380, 24 needs to build. And I said cash flow spike only. I thought it reported tonight. I have to I have to check. If I if I'm if I, if it did report, I apologize. But anyway, here was FSR. Uh, here was FSR. It took out that $24 level. Uh, one of actually as high as the 2480, as you can see, it reversed uh, pretty aggressively. So it didn't report. Maybe, 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 maybe I got my days wrong. But anyway, um, here here's here's kind of it could have been a good day. It could have been a really good trade. Uh, Twitter, I put in, I go. 75 it needs to build um and i go never mind it just exploded i was i was literally typing the pivot uh some some filing came out and uh twitter this morning went up uh, almost like 79.80 really really big move uh billy 139 rejected three times on the 60 minute needs to reclaim uh earnings beat and here is billy right here is billy here is the 139 i was told my see these two candles right here right 138.83 uh, 138.88. So once it took out that 139, really, really big spike. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who did take it. Went to almost the 147 level. Uh, Boeing never got to the 229.80, uh, 230 level. Uh, cost, nice little chart there. Uh, 340 needs to build. Not a, again, not a big move, especially in this market, but it still looks good. You know, it took out the 340 trade to like th in the 350s. Uh, still looks good. Actually, closed the day green, so that one still looks. Uh, pretty good. Uh, nice little push there. Uh, AMTX take on the way up. Uh, FSR make some sales. All right, here's the trade I lost my life. When I mean that, I don't mean that financially. I mean literally as I was in the trade. So we started. We started watching. Uh, we started watching GameStop, and I put this into the channel. I go, look, experienced traders only. I can't believe um, I'm even typing this. But 152 is the 60 minute supply it needs to build, right? And that's when we started watching buyers come in with some size, by the way, for the 200 and 300 weeklies. And here was the pivot, right? And this is when you know something is not for you. So here's the pivot. So, right, you see this one, you see this 152 level right here, right? Right over here, this uh, at, uh, it put in a high around 10 o'clock at 152. So I knew this is supply, right? So I, we get long this thing. We get long this thing. I had a buy stop, by the way. I had a buy stop and kids don't try this at home. I went downstairs for lunch and I checked my phone. I saw it, got, it, it triggered. Then I started thinking all these crazy thoughts in my head. Oh my God, what happens if it gets, if it gets halted? It's gonna, you know, maybe it doesn't open up again. Maybe it goes to 20 and I freak out. Like I freak out. And I started running up the stairs and everybody in the live webinar started laughing at me because you hear me running up the stairs like I'm about to have a, have a heart attack. So I make some sales, right? I make some sales and I say, but as I'm in the trade and as the stock is going higher, I go, I don't wanna be in this thing, okay? I know my limits. I'm, I'm, I'm man enough to admit it. I am adult enough to admit it. I am um, comfortable my own admit it. And I would rather trade Tesla with full size blindfolded right? Amazon blindfolded, then trade this thing. So I sold it, you know, I sold it. Uh, people were laughing at me. I sold it and yada, 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 goes up another 25 points. So if you did take it, congratulations. <laughs> it's just not for me. It's just really not for me. And the most important part, um, the most important part, I see why people say this is game. This is crazy. This is absolute crazy. Even technically when you're in the trade and it's going for you and you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to be in the trade. That's your first clue. Don't be in the trade. So guys, have a great, great night. Uh, stay patient. Uh, stay patient with your career. Trust technical analysis. Uh, put in the work. Believe in God. The most important part is stay in business. Guys, I love you all. God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow.